right, and welcome back to the Legal Cut Pro Podcast, a Canadian entertainment law podcast. My name is Greg Pang. And I'm Michelle Molyneux. And this is another special recording intro for one of my pet projects, I guess you can say. It was uh, done at the Edmonton Comic Expo, and I am a a big nerd, so I attend these (laughs) comic (laughs) expos. It, It is a mock trial of Thanos, and Thanos being the villain, if you're unfamiliar, main villain in Avengers Affinity War, and I believe he's going to be still the name, main villain in the Endgame, because it, anyway, we won't go into the, <laughs> <laughs> the MCU much there, but um, myself and uh, a number of my uh, colleagues, friends, decided to put together a mock trial, essentially because we, we just love the movie so much, and we thought it wouldn't be fun to put Thanos on trial for war crimes, for wiping out half of life in, uh, in all the universe. And this was inspired by the legal geeks. And so they gave uh, us, uh, Josh Gilliland gave us permission to essentially uh, say in association with legal geeks and gave us some advice in running a mock trial. So, and actually I hope to speak with Josh at some point about running mock trials. So hmm. Michelle, have you ever done a mock trial before? Um, yes, actually I have. I had to think about that one. Yes, I've done a few uh, mock appeals, but I did do one mock trial. Oh, really? And and when was that? Was that in law school or before? Uh, Law school, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I remember doing a couple of moots in in law school. Yes, yeah, yeah. I definitely did a few moots. Um, I did, I I competed in a few moots as well. Okay. And I always lost. (laughs) Oh, you know, uh, I, uh, that was the same with me. I competed in one moot. It was... The Niagara. I'm not sure if it exists hmm. anymore. And it was a U.S. Canada one, so it was really cool because hmm. we actually got to go to Cleveland oh, wow. to go compete in this moot. Um, unfortunately, we didn't advance. I was I was so pissed off because I thought our argument was so strong, but we didn't advance uh, beyond um, I think the second round or whatever it was. Oh, right. Wow. So which which uh, moot? Uh, any of a particular note that you'd like to just mention? Yeah. So I did the Clinton J. Ford moot in my third year of law school, and that one's local, just U of A students competing against U of A students. Mm-hmm. And it's a bit of an example for the first years to see how moots are run. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, in my second year, I did the Alberta Court of Appeal moot. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, that's uh, a little bit of Edmonton versus Calgary. Oh, very fun. Very yeah. fun. <laughs> All right. So uh, in in terms of just going back to this uh, mock trial of Thanos, uh, I'd just like to just quickly give a shout out to my, my wonderful cast and crew. That included Jesse Chisholm, who was, uh, I think she's still, a, yeah, she's still a law student at the University of Alberta. She played the role of the prosecutor. Scott Richardson, who played the role of defense counsel for Thanos, and he's also a law student at the University of Alberta. Cindy Q, who played the judge, and she's a friend of mine from law school. Rob Mamcher, who played Thanos, and he got himself painted purple for the role. Uh, Maria Chiesa, actually my wife, who played the role of the court clerk. And Amanda Proudfoot, who played the role of Dr. Susan Storm, one of the witnesses. And I'd also like to thank Haley Sutherland, who was our makeup and prosthetics artist. Stella Varvis from the University of Alberta, who is our student mentor, and helped find the the two students, uh, Scott and Jesse, to participate in this. Ryan Glover, who provided the gauntlet that uh, we use as a, as a prop. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I uh, hope you enjoy this. The uh, like, like the other post of the panel, the audio is not the greatest. I actually patched it in right to the soundboard, but I didn't test the levels quite well. I'm not that great of a technical person. So it was peaking a bit. So, um, so apologies for the sound quality. And I hope you enjoy. This is the very first time I've attempted produ- attempted producing a mock trial on my own. So there are a lot of things that did not go as planned. But we were very, very happy with the turnout. A uh, very, very enthusiastic audience. And uh, hopefully that uh, there's uh, another room in the future to do this again if uh, I'm, I'm so crazy to, to spend that much time and stress to do it. So... <laughs> Can't wait to listen. (laughs) All right, excellent. Okay, enjoy everyone, and see you next time. All right, everyone, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time out of your expo to come here to check out our mock trial of Thanos in association with the Legal Geeks. Warning, there are some spoilers here, so if you haven't seen Avengers Infinity War, that's kind of your problem. So... (laughs) So this is a fa- our fan-made play 
um, myself, a couple lawyers, a couple law students, and some, um, the rest of my amazing cast and crew are very happy and excited to perform for you here today. We have a jury. We, ha we do not know the verdict of, Fa uh, of Thanos' fate because we have a jury of six in the front. Jury members, put up your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. They will decide if Thanos is guilty or not of war crimes. So without further ado, Madam Clerk. All rise for the Honorable Judge Q of the International Criminal Court. Please be seated. Madam Clerk, please read the matter that is before us today. This special sitting of the International Criminal Court under Article 3 of the Rome Statute is now in open session. Docket number ICC-2-15-4-18 in the case of the prosecutor and Thanos, her Honorable Judge Q residing. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Counsel, please state your appearances. Thank you, Your Honor. Chisholm J for the prosecution. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Richardson S. for the accused. Okay, thank you. Captain? <laughs> Bring forward the accused. Before we start, ladies and gentlemen, let me just give you a few instructions about this court, which is my court. I expect decorum, civility at all times, except for the few boos and a few yays I may permit. Any more outbursts, and I'll adjourn these proceedings. Don't think we want that. Madam Clerk, please read the general nature of the charges against the accused. Mr. Thanos, you are accused of the following. On count one, war crimes in the nature of wanton destruction of civilian property, contrary to Article 8 of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. Count two, crimes against humanity for the extermination of 3.8 billion people contrary to Article 7 of the Rome Statute. Count 3, genocide for the willful and deliberate killings of 3.8 billion humans, contrary to Article 6 of the Rome Statute and with genocide as defined under Articles 2 and 3 of the 1948 Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Genocide. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Will the accused and defense counsel stand for the arrangement? Mr. Thanos, on all counts, how do you plead? I don't recognize the justice system of your puny little planet. <laughs> I am Thanos, the last son of Titan and wielder of the Infinity Stones. Mr. Richardson? Uh, uh, excuse me, Your Honor. Uh, I miss. I'm going to give you one more chance. Control your client. Uh, yes. yes, Your Honor. I have, may proceed. I have nothing but contempt for this court. <laughs> Audience, my patient has it limits. Defense counsel? Uh, apologies, Your Honor. I am innocent. <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor, the accused pleads not guilty. You may be seated. Before we begin, I'll address the jurisdictional issue. 
which I'm sure is top of mind for everyone here when I talk about jurisdictional issues. I've reviewed the written briefs from both counsel and hereby declare that this court exercises jurisdiction over the accused in accordance with Article 13 of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. Counsel, I will not entertain any further arguments on the issue. Defense counsel, if you are ready, you may proceed with your case. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon, members of the jury. Now, my friend is going to be presenting to you her case that Thanos is some kind of evil supervillain. <laughs> now, it may be easy to just simply liken him to one of the bad men who committed atrocities on our own planet, Hitler, Stalin, Pol Pot, to name a few. But unlike those madmen, uh, Mr. Thanos was not motivated by hate or uh, racial superiority or zealous extremism, no. No, Mr. Thanos did what he did for the greater good. Now just imagine the consequences of his just standing idly by while the universe consumed itself. If Mr. Thanos did nothing, our children wouldn't grow up with full bellies and clear skies. <clears throat> now that's not to say I don't know what it's like to lose a loved one. I was there for the snap. <laughs> that kind of loss hurts like hell. That kind of loss leads to anger. And in that anger, we want retribution. But I ask you, is that true justice? We want retribution, we want our pound of flesh, we want to, as some would say, avenge. <laughs> no, no members of the jury, we, we do not want that here. Now today you will hear testimony of the pain that Thanos endured personally, and of the horrendous suffering that he witnessed on his home planet. You will also hear about how Earth was set on the same course for destruction, and that if not for Mr. Thanos' intervention, we ourselves would be facing assured annihilation. But most importantly, members of the jury, you will have to decide whether it is right to convict this man as a genocidal war criminal, or instead, understand that his actions were necessary to avoid extinction, to bring balance to a universe unchecked, and to ensure our survival as a species. At the end of the day, members of the jury, it's a simple calculus. What is greater? Half now or none later? Thank you, Your Honor. Those are my submissions. Defense counsel, do you want to make an opening statement at this time? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Members of, your, of the jury, the facts in this case are that the accused, Mr. Thanos, willfully and deliberately directed his minions to cause massive acts of destruction to parts of New York City and Wakanda in brazen acts of aggression. During this process, he not only killed many of the brave heroes trying to defend Earth, he also killed many innocent people as well. It is also a fact that Mr. Thanos, with the help from his Infinity Gauntlet, wielded the combined power of the Infinity Stones, and with just the snap of his fingers, murdered 3.8 billion people on this planet. But that's not all. While this honorable court only tries crimes that happen on Earth, with this quote-unquote snap, Mr. Thanos murdered half of all life, perhaps trillions of sentient beings in the universe. You'll see that Mr. Thanos does not contest these facts because they are indisputable. You will also hear from Mr. Thanos that he did this all out of mercy and that we're all better off for it. But during this trial, you'll hear from expert witnesses that the utter recklessness of his actions actually led to chaos. You'll also hear from Mr. Thanos like I said, of the mercy that he is bestowing upon everyone for this. My learned friend will try his best to elicit your sympathy 
for this killer. But members of the jury, there is no defense to his actions. Either he committed them or he did not. Murder, mass murder, with mercy or without mercy, with pain or without pain, is still mass murder. So please, members of the jury, I therefore respectfully ask you to find him guilty on all counts. Thank you, counsel. The prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls Dr. Susan Storm as the first witness. For the record, you are Dr. Susan Storm? Yes, I am. You're a superhero, also known as the Invisible Woman, formerly a member of the popular Fantastic Four. Yes, but popular isn't exactly the word that I would use to describe the Fantastic Four. 4.3 stars out of 10 on IMDb. I should have been an Avenger. Dr. Storm, please tell us about your educational and scientific background. I have a PhD in demography from the University of Pennsylvania. I do research on human populations. Are you being paid to be here today as an expert witness? No, though I'd really rather not be here at all. I was served a summons by your office. Thank you, Dr. Storm. Your Honor, I'd like to make an application to have Dr. Storm qualified as an expert witness. Defense counsel, do you have a response? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Though we don't doubt Dr. Storm's credentials, she isn't a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> Though my friend is technically correct to date, we're all under the Disney banner now. And to be frank, there's almost no one left in her field with qualified expertise. I've heard both of you on this matter. I will allow the application as requested. Please proceed with your expert witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Dr. Storm, what was the Earth's population just prior to the snap? And by the snap, I mean when Thanos used the Infinity Stones to kill half of all life. Approximately 7.6 billion. And what happened to that population after the snap occurred? Almost half, nearly 3.8 billion people, died instantaneously. My entire team, dead. I watched as my fiancé turned to dust in front of me because of that monster. What happened to the world's farmers after the snap? About half of the people who knew how to farm and about half of the people working in food distribution are dead. That means millions of acres of what used to be productive farmland are rotting and being overgrown because we don't have enough people to farm anymore. So why not just train more people to work those jobs supporting food distribution? Because it's not that easy. I mean, it'll take maybe a generation or more to, to do that. I mean, why couldn't Thanos have just killed all the lawyers instead of half the farmers? <laughs> I beg your pardon. I'm kidding. It's a joke, you know. Shakespeare, Henry VI. Right. The witness will mind her words going forward. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Moving along. How were the deaths distributed around the world? Random, but not even. Though our observations were that the deaths were indeed random, randomness does not mean even distribution. For example, though 70% of people in Toronto died, only 40% of Edmontonians turned to dust. So this has actually led to quite a bit of chaos, to put it mildly, though fewer Leafs fans might not necessarily be such a bad thing. <laughs> you have a singular wit, doctor. Last question. What has resulted from this uneven distribution of deaths? Like I said, chaos. As with food production, the deaths in law enforcement, construction, I mean, you name it. It was all random, but unevenly distributed. Many major cities have been abandoned or become like Lord of the Flies because Thanos didn't quite think this through. Thank you, Dr. Storm. Those are my questions. 
Thank you, Defense Council. Uh, thank you, Council. Defense Council, you may proceed with cross-examination. Dr. Storm, are you familiar with a famous paper by Thomas Malthus entitled, An Essay on the Principles of Human Population? Yes, I am. Are you referring to the Malthusian catastrophe? That's right, Doctor. The Malthusian catastrophe warned that violence, genocide, uh, disease epidemics, nasty weather, and pestilence would be precursors to a widespread, widespread famine on a planet with too many humans. Uh, isn't that correct? Yes, that is the gist of it, but we thought that was an extremist position. Well, is it also true that a pre-SNAP uh, joint study by the World Wildlife Fund and World Watch Institute found that uh, human beings were using 20% more renewable resources than could be replaced each year? Yes, that was their study. Uh, one more question. The United Nations Population Fund predicted that the human population would have peaked late this century and would have begun to shrunk. In other words, we would have uh, reached peak population pre-SNAP. Isn't that correct? That was their prediction. One of the theories for that population shrinkage uh, would have been because of the Malthusian catastrophe, yes? That's one of the theories. Now, post-SNAP, are any of these pre-SNAP studies we've been talking about still applicable? Uh, Post-murder of 3.8 billion people by Thanos? No, none of the studies are applicable. Well, then you'll agree with me that we are no longer on course for peak population, yes? I will agree with that. <clears throat> when, in your expert opinion, will we reach peak population? I don't know. I mean, population growth right now, it's momentarily negative. Currently, there are no predictions for peak population. Thank you. Those are my questions for the witness. Does prosecution counsel wish to redirect the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Dr. Storm, what was the other theory or theories for pre snap population growth late in the 21st century? The other theory was that our population would have steadily shrunk instead of catastrophically collapsed. It was already happening in first world countries like Canada. We theorized that developing countries would eventually catch up, so it actually had more to do with people having fewer babies than anything else. Thank you. I have no further questions. Dr. Storm, you are now excused. Does the prosecution have another witness to call? No, Your Honor. The prosecution rests. Defense counsel, you may proceed with your case. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to call Thanos to the stand. <laughs> now, for the record, you are Thanos, formerly of the planet Titan, yes? Yes, I am. Mr. Thanos, it's public record that your home planet essentially destroyed itself due to overpopulation, but that you had proposed a solution to save your people. Please, elaborate. I proposed to cull the population by exactly one half randomly without regard for stature, wealth, or anything else. But of course they labeled me a madman. Uh, what did you try to do to convince fellow Titanians to follow through with your plan? I tried every legal means necessary. I tried to introduce legislation, wrote papers, speeches. I even gave TED Talks. <laughs> None of it worked, obviously. Now, what did the governments on Titan try to do to solve their overpopulation problems? At first, they thought their technology, which was more advanced than Earth's technology, would be the, the key to solving everything. But they couldn't keep up. Then came famines, pandemics and then scapegoating. People started killing each other for stupid reasons like religion and color of their skin. Uh, and then what happened? Like I said, Titan's technology was advanced and our weapons were also very advanced. I'm one of the survivors. Few of us remained. Please tell us about your visits to other planets. I went to many worlds to warn them of what would happen and told them the solution I had in mind. But they either chased me away or laughed most of them suffered Titan's fate. Then what did you do? I decided to make my life's work to restore balance to life in the universe. And with the infinity stones in the gauntlet, I could do that. 
mercifully and cleanly. By culling half of all sentient life in the universe, including Earth? Yes, that's correct, my child. Everyone who turned to dust dispassionately and completely randomly, and they died painlessly. Your world has now ensured long-term stability and, and prosperity. Mr. Thanos, with all six Infinity Stones, why not just double the universe's amount of resources? Because doubling the Earth's resources wouldn't be random. For instance, you have what you call your first world who control most of the wealth and resources on the planet. Their resources would have doubled, that's true, but the problem would persist, and the inevitable would only be delayed. So why turn half of all life into dust? By eliminating half of you randomly, you suddenly now have to rethink the way you distribute wealth and resources, essentially reshaping the way that you function as a society. The easiest way to do this. Now, for the record, did you kill half of all life in the universe or just sentient beings? Just sentient beings like humans, it'd be quite counterproductive to have killed half of all your crops and cattle with the same snap. Thank you, Mr. Thanos. I have no further questions for the witness. Thank you, counsel. Prosecution, you may cross-examine. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Thanos, did you direct your so-called children of Thanos to attack New York City? I did. Did you have a problem with the death and destruction caused in that attack? They did what they needed to do to get the time stone. Shortly afterwards, you also directed Proxima Midnight and your army of outriders to attack Wakanda, is that right? That's right. Is it fair to say that your orders were to cause as much destruction as possible in order to retrieve the Mind Stone? If only Vision would have just given up the Mind Stone, we would have left peacefully. Wakanda and the Avengers gave us no choice. Mr. Thanos, it was your snapping of your fingers with the Infinity Gauntlet that killed half of all life, correct? Yes, I think we've established that. And you intended on that result, correct? Of course. Were there any kinds of medication or drugs in your body at that moment? The only thing in my body at the time was Thor's new axe. <laughs> No one forced you to do it? I forced myself to save all the half of the life on the, in the universe. Is it fair to say that your view of pre-snap Earth was that there was unequal access to resources by its citizens? Yes, I would say that. You had the space stone that allowed you to instantaneously travel anywhere in the universe. Is that correct? That's correct. And the power stone gave you cosmic level power, correct? You're correct again. With those stones, and combining with the power of the other Infinity Stones, couldn't you just have created better access to the universe's resources for the less fortunate? I object. Calls for speculation. I want to hear the answer for this one, actually. It's very interesting. But, counsel, you had two questions there. Break it up or rephrase. Using the power of all of the Infinity Stones, could you have created better access to the universe's existing resources for people? Hmm. I didn't really think of that. <laughs> it would have been a lot more work. And if you had done that, we would have worshipped you like a benevolent god. Your Isn't honor. That right? Your honor. That's okay. I'll move on. Mr. Thanos, isn't it true that you have a fascination with death? and that you actually fell in love with the physical embodiment of death? I object. Two questions in one, and my friend's line of questioning refers to facts not established in the MCU. <laughs> I've heard you. Jury, I'm going to give you instruction now because of the outbursts of our counsel here. So listen well. Disregard it. Please proceed. Pre-Infinity Gauntlet. You felt good when you and the children of Thanos killed half the population of Gamora's planet, right? I felt good because the ends were achieved. The planet is now thriving and prosperous. When you and the Black Order decimated Xandor, did you enjoy that? Again, I did what I needed to do to fulfill my destiny. And when you slaughtered the last of the Asgardians on the refugee ship, how did that make you feel? 
I felt nothing but victory. They were an obstacle in carrying out my solution. Solution? You mean your final solution? Your Honor, I object. My friend here is clearly trying to take advantage of my client's ignorance of Earth human history, uh, uh, namely Hitler's final solution. <laughs> All right, I will sustain it. Move on, counsel. Does it bother you that even before the snap, you and your minions had murdered billions of sentient beings? If you're asking if it weighs on my conscience, the answer is no. I brought prosperity to many planets. Prosperity to every planet that you and your minions massacred? Not every planet. Lose some, win most. Overall, I was achieving balance. And does it bother you that you are responsible for the murder of 3.8 billion humans? For the merciful and painless turning to dust of half your people? No, not at all. I see the positive results eventually, and you'll agree that it was worth it. Those are my questions for this witness. Thank you, counsel. Defense counsel, do you wish to redirect your witness? Uh, no, thank you, Your Honor. Okay. I will ask defense counsel to now close. Members of the jury, Thanos stands accused of committing genocide. Now, according to the 1948 Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Genocide, the definition of genocide can only be met where acts are committed and, I quote, with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. Now, I ask you, members of the jury, which nation did Thanos specifically target? Which, which ethnicity? Which race? Which religion? No, Thanos called half of the universe at random. Now, these killings, according to the letter of the law, are not acts of genocide. Uh, thus, we cannot find the son of Titan guilty of that crime. Now, before you render your verdicts for the rest of the charges against my client, I want you to put yourself in Mr. Thanos' position. Armed with the full knowledge that humanity was headed for a violent, bloody implosion post-peak population. Now, it is more arguable than ever that pre-snap all of our environmental crises could be traced back to overpopulation. Uh, deforestation, desertification, water shortages, pollution, uh, the return of previously eradicated diseases and mass extinction. Now, on the one hand, you can do nothing and allow madness, chaos, mass starvation, blood in the streets. Or, on the other hand, the quick, painless end of existence for half of humanity in order to save our future. For Mr. Thanos, there was only ever one option, and that was to choose life. And we should all be grateful that he had the strength of will to make the hard choice. So, is punishing this man true justice? Is condemning the man who's preserved not only our species, but of all the species in the universe, the right thing to do? Deep down, you know the answer. Now, members of the jury, in closing, I say to you, if the infinity gauntlet fits, you must acquit. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor, those are my submissions. Prosecutor, please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the jury, when Spider-Man lay in Tony Stark's arms, facing imminent death, saying, I don't want to go, Mr. Stark, we saw a small glimpse of the pain and destruction caused by the accused, Mr. Thanos. Not only did he kill many of the brave heroes defending Earth, he killed 3.8 billion innocent people. Seniors, mothers, fathers, even children like Peter Parker, gone in an instant. These murders did not target a specific race or religion, nor did they target a specific nationality. Instead, they targeted a larger group, one in which we are all members and that is living, sentient beings. He targeted the species of life under which he predicted would have species-wide catastrophes, 
in the future. He was not certain that these catastrophes would occur, and he was not certain when they would occur. As we heard from Dr. Storm, the so-called Malthusian catastrophe was a theory. It was not fact. Mr. Thanos caused the death of our friends and families based on an uncertain future. Mr. Thanos is not human, and he cannot come to Earth and play God and take control of our population on an uncertain prediction. If we want murderers to be able to kill people and then get away with it under the defense that, well, they probably would have died sometime in the future anyways. <laughs> of course not. Furthermore, regardless of whether the rationale behind Mr. Thanos' crimes is sound, motive is not a defense to these crimes. Either he committed them or he didn't. And Mr. Thanos admits to have committing these crimes. Please, members of the jury, consider all of the lives lost. Consider the last moments of the brave people who fought for our planet. Spider-Man, the Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Star-Lord, just to name a few. Not to mention all of the other innocent people who lost their lives. Mr. Thanos committed horrific crimes, and I therefore respectfully ask the jury to find him guilty on all counts. Thank you. Thank you, counsels, members of the jury. This is when I instruct you of your important role and task today. You now have two minutes. I know that's quick, but in this universe, that's plenty. <laughs> So go on, deliberate, but you must reach consensus in any guilty verdict. Proceed. Hey, everyone having a good time? All right, excellent. So we'll just pretend the jury can't hear us right now. Who thinks, by a show of applause, that Thanos is innocent of his crimes? All right, all right. And who thinks he's guilty? Okay. All right, excellent. And who thinks that this is a mockery of justice because we should not be trying a god for his actions? Okay, excellent, excellent. All right. uh, we'll, we'll, take that into, we'll, we'll take that under advisement, as lawyers say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so we have another, maybe another minute before uh, the jury renders this decision. I just want to just uh, give a quick shout out to my, uh, my little son who was dressed as Captain America, Luca. Yay, here you are for Luca. All right. And uh, just one more thing, very nepotistic of me, but uh, it is my wife's birthday, the lovely Maria here. Happy birthday. <laughs> okay. All right. Excellent. Okay. So um, we just have a, let's say, we'll give another 30 seconds, and then we will have... No. Oh, we're not going to sing happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Four person? Yes. Are you the four person? Yes. Okay. How do you found the counts against the accused? On count uh, one of war, crime, war crimes, uh, we find the uh, accused Thanos guilty. Yeah. <laughs> Order. <laughs> Continue for a On person. count two of all kind of crimes against humanity, we uh, find the accused guilty. <laughs> On count three of genocide, we find the accused innocent. Yeah. 
Thank you for a person. You may be seated. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Members of the jury, I thank you for your service. You've done an amazing job, a tremendous job, even though you only received two minutes today. Good job. Mr. Thanos, for your conviction of the counts of only one, and count of two, you will be sentenced as follow, to banishment into the void where stories die. Aww. That void is not of our universe and it will not be grateful to you. I hereby sentence you to be banished to the DC Cinematic Universe. Oh, your Honor. Order. 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 Members of the audience, I thank you for your service, your attendance, and your participation today. You've been a fantastic audience. This court is now adjourned. All right, thank you again, everyone, for attending. Please give it up again for my cast and crew. Thank you again, and if you have any questions or anything like that, you can stay behind and uh, ask us. We'll hang out a little bit here and a little bit outside. Thank you very much again.